and today we're going to do things a little differently because I have actually already filmed making this bottle twice and I only have one bottle so I live 40 miles away from the craft store where I bought it so I cannot make it again and short of pulling everything off I um you know which I don't want to do because I think it looks so cute I'm going to give you an idea of how exactly I made it. We're not going to go through every single step because, like I said, I filmed this twice and lost both the videos. I've, I've had a heck of a day, but you'll be able to get an idea of how I did everything because um, I'll, I'll show you the different steps. Okay, so let's start. Okay, it's just a main glass bottle. And you can get them at your craft store or whatnot. I used to make them in much larger sizes and sell them as perfume bottles for, um, you know, putting perfume or lotion or whatnot in. And I used to sell them when I did the art shows, and they were one of my most popular items. So when I saw this little one, I thought, oh, that would be a really cute bottle of hope. And if you're not familiar with bottles of hope, they're just a great way that the polymer clay community gives back to cancer patients by creating these bottles of hope, which are little bottles that are then given to cancer patients. They're never sold. They're always donated and given. So we're actually having a challenge going on at craftylink.ning.com for bottles of hope. And you can see some of the ones that uh, people have already made. So I thought I'd make one and give you an idea of how you can get started. But like I said, I filmed this twice and lost both of the footages. So we're back to something that's, that's mostly made, but you'll get the idea. So anyways, I started off with this cookie cutter. And I rolled out a flat sheet of clay through my third largest setting on my pasta machine. And then I laid my heart punchinella on top like so. Then I rolled over it with my rod and came in with copper powdered pigments and took my finger and rubbed it all over and that left this design. I'm not going to go ahead and do it now because there's no point. There's already one on here. So, so it leaves the design and with a bunch of little cute little hearts and then you can cut it out, which I did with the cookie cutter because I made it much larger here. Okay, so that's how I created that background and then I molded the purple clay into this mold as you can see this is the design and came out of this mold and if you want to see something on molding I've I've done them in several videos and Kira has too so just look at our channel and you make sure to subscribe to polymer clay TV because then you'll get all of our weekly videos and so then I just pulled it out of the mold and uh, placed it right on top of the piece that I cut out so, once again, I started out with the punchinella, used my finger with the powdered pigments to impart the design on here, which is like, this is what it looks like, cut it out with the cookie cutter, and then I'm placing it over the bottle. And let me pull this back so you can kind of see what I did, uh, if I can, let me see if I can without cracking it. Okay, I'm able to get this side loose. So then I just placed it on there. Then I created this flat sheet and stuck it underneath. I, I placed it underneath and had this sitting on top of it. So then that eliminates seeing the edge that I created with, with the flat clay. So it's just a tip so that um, you can cover up edges. But then I pieced together pieces and I used, this is a, just a paintbrush, and I used that as a tool to help smooth out my seams. So that's what I did here. So I placed a piece on this side and then I placed another piece on this side and did it the same way by piecing it underneath my design. So now I don't have that line of, of where I put the clay together showing. So I get a nice finished smooth piece. And then on the bottom here, I then again fitted it in like so and cut it to, to, the, to the size and did that again on the top and smoothed it once again with the paintbrush. So, and then I cut around the edges here and I talked, you know, in the last video that I lost, I talked about how you, you don't have to cover the bottom. Uh, you can leave the bottom open. If you want to cover the bottom, that's entirely up to you. But I found when I do cover the bottom, it likes to wiggle a little. I can never get it just so and air pockets get trapped in there. So I, I choose not to, but that's entirely up to you. If you want to do that, you know, have at it, but I, I don't do that. Okay, so then 
what I did is I used this mold and I created the letters hope and all I did to highlight them was to take the powder pigments and this is a copper color and I just used my finger and rubbed al along the top of the piece that like so and super easy to do I could add the word hope going down here exactly on the same side on the opposite side you know exactly like this side it's up to you um, I thought it might be cute to get to maybe place some little hearts now we have these little punching um, these little uh, plungers that punch out the heart um, they come in graduated sizes so I was actually thinking I would use a smaller one to do that and maybe put a smaller heart here wherever you know it looked like it would fit in but I only I only had this one handy so I'm just showing you that that's the one that's what you can do but you could also go for variations and I use this mold right here this dotted mold and you know if you're using obviously if I was using pink then it would all blend in but since I'm using the purple it kind of stands out so it really depends on the look you're going for I could see some cute little crystals in here to give it a whole different look um, you know it's really entirely your, your your taste I happen to like this look though for this particular bottle because it, it kind of just blends all together and you know this is just powder pigments highlighting the raised areas and I think it just I think it just gives a, be a really beautiful look with not a lot of effort you know it's just pretty super super pretty so that's how you do that and um, and then I just would piece this around here and use my blade to cut it to 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 fit use my um, paintbrush to smooth out any edges and then you have a really cute bottle so um, since like I said I didn't get to show you the whole bottle let me show you let's make something for the top let, because it's always nice to have a cute little top on it too and let's use this mold because that would make a really cute top so let's do that I'm gonna do it in purple and so you would condition your clay so that it's that it's moving you know and when I say that meaning it's not cracking as you do this you, you don't want your clay to be cracking when you're trying to mold it you're gonna have problems it's not gonna be fully conditioned and ready to go so you have to condition your clay before you even use it and if it's cold outside you're gonna have to condition it even more <laughs> if it's cold in your studio well that's that's the way it goes unfortunately you want so you're basically warming up your clay so that it it's now fluid it's not fluid but it feels fluid like it's not all cracking and it's it's smooth that's maybe the word I should use not fluid so then I'm just gonna place this into my mold like so and I use the heat of my hand to help push it in there you can use a rod and then I just cut off the extra and I, and I run my blade over it until I get rid of all the extra clay that's that's there and I see there's a little like an air pocket in there so I gotta make sure that that's gone you don't want to have that air any air trapped inside and then I pull back on this extra clay here that's around the edge because I don't want that I want to get my clay completely smooth inside of the mold because then it makes more work for yourself if you don't and who wants that I'm not all for extra work I like it the way it is to be smooth coming out of the mold <laughs> just my personal preference it just makes life easier so I try to avoid and having to do anything after it comes out of the mold except embellish it so there I have it it's in the mold it feels like it's perfectly molded and now I'm just gonna kind of torque my mold to try to get it out of there without distorting it and these silicone molds make it really easy to do that see it's very hard to distort them as you take them out because they bend so well <sighs> there's a piece of fuzz on there and so there you have that and um, so now we're creating a top for this so we would put this in we're not going to bake this but we need it to see how we want to manage this and I think that is so cute just by itself so let's add a little color to this I don't think we're going to need to add any extra design to it because I think it's so cute just on its own so let's go around the edges here with our finger lightly to highlight the edges 
So I'm still using this copper color, which is so pretty. And then I'm kind of going to give it a light, swift kind of swoosh across it as well. Don't worry if you get a little... You can always use your finger. Don't tell anybody I did that. <laughs> but you can always, you know, if you're not happy with something, wipe it off. Uh, but I kind of like that. You know, I like that whole vintagey look. I'm not really looking to make it, you know, super shiny or whatever. I'm really kind of just kind of highlighting. And I like that. So there you go. And uh, you would bake this separately and then you would glue it on. That's how you would do that. And uh, you can decorate it any way you want. I just wanted to give you an idea. I'm sorry I wasn't able to show you every single step, but after two times of doing it and losing the video, and I only had one of these bottles, it just wasn't meant to happen. So I apologize for that, but you get the gist of it. It's really easy to do. It's just you have to take your time, and you can bake this in stages. And with glass, Baking it right on the glass, you would bake it the same temperature recommended on your package of clay. So there's no extra time that you have to put in because the glass will heat up with the clay. It's not going to break because glass melts at a much higher temperature, which is in the thousands, and the clay only is in a couple hundred degrees. So no worries with that. But like I said, don't bake your cork. If it comes with a cork, just like bake this flat. And then what you'll do is after it's finished bake, baking, you would just glue that on. And you could paint your cork if you don't like it. It's totally up to you. You could certainly embellish more than just adding the heart if you want to. But I really like that look. I think it's super cute. So, you know, think about making your own bottles of hope to donate to, to cancer patients in your area. Um, it's just a wonderful program, and we love to support it. And, uh, you know, we have a challenge going on, like I said. And oh. If you want to make your own bottles of hope, um, we'd love to see what you make. Uh, so share it with us at Crafty Link. Dot ning dot com, and uh, you can see the, some of the other ones that the community has made as well. So we have the Polymer Clay Adventure still going on. You can join that all year long at PolymerClayAdventure.com. And you can find these different products in our shop at PolymerClayTV.com. So thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.